Welcome back. In this video, we will look at the app bar class in Flutter. And this is a material design app bar. You can read through some of these that basically say an app bar consists of a toolbar and potentially other widgets such as a tab bar and they carry on. And they say they are typically used in the scaffold app bar property, which places the app bar as a fixed height widget at the top of the screen. And then if you want to have a scrollable app bar, you can look at the sliver app bar, which we'll not do today which embeds the app bar in a custom scroll view. It displays toolbar widgets, the leading, the title, the actions above the bottom, if any. The bottom is usually for a tab bar, so we will look at that today also. And a flexible space widget is specified, then it is stacked behind the toolbar on the bottom widget. Uh, the following diagram shows um, each of these slots appear on the toolbar when the writing language is left to right. Okay, so if you look at this picture, this is what we're going to build today, is to have a leading widget at the top of the screen, to have a title, to have some actions that will do something. And then we'll also have the bottom widget, which will become our tab bar. So just remember, you can carry on, you can look at some coding examples there. Uh, they show you and take you to some other widgets that you can use with it. It shows you the constructor and some of its properties. So you can go through each one of these properties, click on them, and look at the methods and so forth. So we will look at the app bar class today. So I'm going to close this, and I want you to go to bit.ly slash app bar assets. And these are the assets that we will use for this specific video. I'm going to download the assets. So please make sure you download it. After downloading the file, let's open it up in the folder. And let's extract this. So I'm going to say extract all and I'm going to extract this. Right, so there's my assets folder. I'm going to copy this assets folder and I'm going to go into my new project folder that I just created for this video. So I'm going to go into my Flutter projects. There's my Flutter app bar video. It's just a blank project. We'll look at that now. And I'm just going to paste this in the root, which means it must be at the same level as Android, Build, iOS and so forth. We will have assets, images, that same profile picture we had previously, and then just the Flutter logo. Right, so let's go into our new project. So I'm going to open up the project. There's the project, and let's open up the virtual device. Okay, so this is just the example project template that actually opens up when you create a new project. I named my project Flutter App Bar Video. Now let's go to the pubspec.yaml file. And we're going to include the assets folder there. So just control forward slash will open up that part. And in order for us to add the assets folder, we will just say assets slash images slash. And that will actually go into my assets folder and include everything there under images. Right. Then you can save. That will include all the pictures for your project make it part of your project, and then we can start creating this. So I'm going to delete all this coding that was created for me. I'm going to start off with a stateless widget called my app. My app will return a material app there, like we always do. And the home will be, and let's call this main page as we did in previous videos. And then we can go and create this main page class of ours. So let's make this a state full widget and we're going to make this or call this main page. Right, so there is our new project and we're going to start off with a scaffold here. Our scaffold will have the app bar and what we previously did was to just give it a title as a normal text widget and say something in the title. So for now I'm just going to say flutter there as the title and we're going to come back to it now and then we will have a body for our scaffold. So the body for now, I'm just going to have this as a normal text widget. So let's say center. Uh, the child for the center widget will be a text widget. And then let's set the text as some text that we will use throughout. So let's just declare a string for text at the top and you'll see where we're going to use this now. And I'm going to say none clicked. So every time we click something inside of our app bar, we want to show this in the center on the, of the screen in this widget. I'm just going to use text there. Right. So at this stage, if I save this, let's run this quickly so we can get the app running on the virtual device. 
So we have the basic scaffold with an app bar, which is the one that we're actually going to tackle today. And there's for the body of the scaffold, there's a center widget that will just display at this stage, none clicked unless we change it. Okay, so there's the app bar. We've got the title flutter. So let's look at some of the other options that we can use here. Right, so if you look at this, you can see that there's a leading widget. Uh, there's a title widget. So we've been using the title widget a lot. Uh, and that's the one that we already have there now. So we've used the title widget before. But let's try and use the leading widget now. So the leading widget is the widget that comes actually just before your uh, text there that's flutter. That's the title widget. So what I'm going to do for the leading widget is to actually just use an image there. And we're going to use that icon that or the logo that we have there. So in order to do an image, you'll need to specify the image property. And that image property, we can just use the normal asset image. And for an asset image, you just need to get the path to that image. So in our case, it's assets, then under the folder images, and then we'll get to logo.png. Now, let's save this quickly. And you can see there's the logo. So you can see it needs some space all around. So what we can do is on that image, just use the control dot. And we're going to wrap it with some padding. And let's just see if that 8 padding is in fact fine for us. Right, no problem at all. So that's the leading widget. And it's just any type of widget that you want to place in the front. It doesn't need to be an image. It could be anything else. You can also leave out the title, for example, and then make a, a nice big, um, maybe a logo that's a bit bigger there in width instead of adding your text there. Right, then for an bar we can also have the background color set. So we use the background color property and let's set this to colors.bluegray and we use a shade of 400. Well, I think 400 is the basic one, but let's use that 400 there if you run it again. Okay, so there we created the background of our app bar. Right, now for the next step that we can also do as part of the app bar, so you'll see the leading, you'll see the title. We're going to get to the bottom later on. But you see one that says actions there. And that's a list of widgets. So we're going to use the actions quickly. So we're going to say actions there. And you can see it's a list of widgets. And the actions that we're going to use here is going to be called an icon button. So that's basically just an icon showing. But it's got this nice function with it that's the on pressed. So that's if you actually click on it, something will happen. Okay, so it needs two things. It needs an icon and it needs the on pressed. So for now, the on pressed, I'm just going to pass in an uh, anonymous function there. Make sure you put your comma at the end. For the icon, now for the first icon, let's say we're going to set this to an icon. And it's going to be icons. Dot, and let's just use the cost one there. So for now, if we save, you can see there's the cast button. So maybe this is, you'll see this a lot in your YouTube app. We will get um, this cast button there. And then when you click it, you can use a Chromecast or some device like that to cast to. Right, so let's just quickly look at this. If you click on it, you can see there's some splash radius around this button. It's an icon button, but it's got this white splash that goes around it. So you can even set that as part of your icon button. So let's just set the splash radius there to, let's make it a 30 and run this again. Now you can see, you can change that radius. I can make it a lot smaller, for example, a 10. If I save it, you can see the splash radius. You can hardly see now. So you can change that splash radius. And that's by just changing this value called splash radius. Okay, so there's the actions. We've got one icon button. If we save, I'm just going to put a comma there also. So it nicely formats. Now for this one, let's do something in the on pressed. And I'm going to call the set state there. And let's change this text there. So I'm going to set the text to, let's set this one to casting clicked. And let's save it again. So now if I click on it, it will say casting clicked. So the on click is working fine. Now let's just add a few more. So for the icon button, we can add a few more icon buttons there. So let's just paste this. Uh, let's have the second icon as, let's say, notification or notifications. And we can say 
notifications clicked. You just save it. There you'll see your second one, and you can see when we click it. Okay. Now let's just add another one there. It's maybe a search. Paste it there. And we can go down and make this search. And we can say search clicked. Now if we save this, you will see you've got your actions there at the top. And you can click on them. And you can do something when it gets clicked. Right, let's do something else now for the last icon button that we're going to have there. I'm going to copy it. And... I'm going to paste it there. So just something interesting. If I'm going to take away this icon there, if you hover over this icon, you can see it's a widget. It's not actually only the icon that could, can be passed in here. You can pass in any widget. So let's say that we want to have a circle avatar here. So instead of having an icon, I want to have a circle avatar. And you see this a lot where you've got some profile page opening up or something like that. So let's say we're going to have then the background image and the background image will be an asset image again and let's use this profile picture that we have there so the asset will then be under assets under images and then we're going to go to this profile.jpg now let's save this one quickly and there you can see your profile picture there and if I click on it something will happen so we can say profile clicked so if we save this again Click on it, the profile was clicked. So you can use icons in here, or you can use something like, for example, this circle avatar. And remember, it's any type of widget, so you can place anything in there. Now, just something interesting. Normally, when you have a profile picture there and you click on it, normally your drawer opens up. So what you could have done is for your scaffold, you could have had a drawer. But maybe because that profile picture is on the left-hand side or the right-hand side, we're going to use the end drawer there. I'm just going to have a normal drawer. I'm not going to do anything. The previous video, we looked at how to create the drawer. So I'm not going to do that again. Just an empty drawer there. Which means if I save now and I drag it from the left, you can see there the drawer opens up. So let's say we want to open up our drawer when we click on this on this avatar. So if we want to do that, we will need to just add something at the top here. So we will talk about keys later on, but for now we can just create a global key of type scaffold key, sorry, scaffold state, and let's call this one draw a key. And I'm going to set this to a global key. Right, so that's all we need to do. And then for the scaffold, we're going to set the key as the drawer key. And then if we want to open up that drawer now, it's very easy by using this key that's connected to the scaffold, we can go down and instead of saying profile click there, we will do the following. We will go to that drawer key, dot current state, and we're going to say dot open the end drawer. And that's all you need to do. So if I save this now and I click on that profile, you can see it opens up the drawer. So you can also use those to just quickly open up a drawer. So all I did was to create a global key at the top, assign that key to the scaffold, and then somewhere, wherever I want to open it up, I can just refer to that key to its current state and then open the end drawer. If you wanted to open the drawer that comes from the left-hand side, it's just open drawer instead of open end drawer. Right, now for the last part of this video, let's have a look at the tab that, or the tab bar that we can also include at the bottom. Now, in order for our tab bar to work, we need to wrap our scaffold. So you're going to use the control and dot. We need to wrap it in a widget. And the widget that we're going to use is a default tab controller. Okay, and you can see that it gives us this... Uh, underline because it needs a length. So let's say we will have a length of three and that just means we will have three items that we're going to display in our tab bar. So we will have three tabbed items. We can also set the initial index and I'm going to set the initial index to zero and we'll see where that comes into play now. All right, if we go down, down then to where we started with the app bar. 
So we've got the actions and there's one property in the app bar that's called bottom. And that bottom, if you hover over it, you can see it. it's a preferred sized widget and this widget appears across the bottom of the app bar, typically a tab bar. So this is what we're going to use here. We're going to use a tab bar. And for this tab bar, we need to specify the tabs. So let's look at the tabs for this tab bar. So you can see if you hover over tabs, it's a list of widgets. So they've got this nice widget called a tab. So that's actually what we're going to do here. It's a tab bar, so we will use tabs. Now for this tab, there's normally an icon that we need to set. Then there's a child, and then you can set some margins and some text. So I'm going to use an icon for now. So let's use the icon property there. We will use an icon. And for the icon data, it will be icons. And let's say we're going to use this as a car repair. That will be the first icon. Don't worry about that error now. It will disappear now. And uh, I'm going to copy these tabs now. So let's take this tab, copy it. We'll add it and add it again so that we have three there. And for this one, it won't be car repair. Let's use this as a home repair service. And for this one, we will have something like a room service. Okay. Let's save again and see if it is corrected now. So you can see there's my tab on now. And I can actually move between the three different tabs. But nothing gets changed at the bottom. So that's the last part then in order to do this. So for that tab... You can see there's also a text widget or text property. And let's set the text as car repair. Let's save that one. And you can see it adds the text at the bottom. And for this one, we can also set the text to home repair. And let's set the text there to room service. Save it. And you can see the text there. Okay, so if you wanted to have only the icons, then you just leave out the text or maybe you just want the text and not the icons. It's up to you. Okay, so for now, I'm going to remove the text there. and I'm going to remove the text and the text. So we just have the icons there. And let's see how we do the tabs now. So in order to do these tabs, so we have the tabs, but in order to show what we need to show in the body, we need to go and change the body. So where did I have the body here? So there's the scaffold, there's the ab bar, and there's the body. So let's change this body now. And what we're going to use in the body now is a tab bar view. So the tab bar view will then shift between different widgets that we want to show on the screen. So for the tab bar view, we need to have children, and the children can now be any type of widget. So I'm just going to use that simple center widget again with the text widget. And for the first one, actually this first child inside of the tab bar view will be this first one, and that is car repair. So let's say something like car repair, but we still show that text widget to see what was clicked when we click the items there at the top. Okay, so that is our first widget there. We'll give you problems there. Don't worry, we'll need to add three before the problem goes away. Okay, so after that widget, we'll have another one and another one. And if we save now, our problem should be gone. Okay, so the what this one will be car repair. The next one will be home repair. And the last one will be room service. So if we save it now, you can see if I click there, car repair, and I can click there, it changes that text. Okay, so this is the car repair, this one is home repair, and this one is room service. And note you can also scroll it like this, so it's working like tabs. Right, and that is it for the app bar as well as the tab bar and how you use them. I hope you've learned something from this video. See you in the next one.